Listen, it's going down in Atlanta this summer. That's right, y'all. Chasing the Beat Live is here. A live experience of queer art and creativity. On Friday, June 21st, doors open up at 7 p.m. Listen, I done got y'all host karaoke with a live band, a little DJ, we got a happy hour, reality TV games. We gonna have a little dancing, appearances by some of your favorite socialites and celebrities. I'm performing, it don't get no better than that. And so much more. <laughs> so much more. This is the gayest variety show ever with a special all queer hip hop lineup featuring Ocean Kelly, Goddess Mikey, Hemingway, Ayo Rashawn and Tiana Banks, plus a whole lot of soul singing from Sunny Dread, Brazy, and Miles Tripp, plus some stand up comedy from Rockefeller and the social media famous Tommy the Gossip, hosted by yours truly, Quentin T. Harris. Oh, yeah, we finna crank it, bitch. Listen, pre sale tickets are going on right now. Head on over to www.eventbrite.com. Search Chasing the Beat or look for the Apache Cafe profile to get your tickets. Get your tickets now before the pre-sale ends May 31st and the price goes up. Now, I know we all outside this summer. So you and your friends jump in the car and pull up on us down in the Atlanta at the Apache Cafe Friday, June 21st for Chasing the Beat Live, a live experience of queer art and creativity. And yes, I did that in one take. <laughs> See you there. Come one, come all, come all. Okay, so Diddy's bodyguard, former bodyguard, Gene Deal, has been, like, spilling his guts on Vlad TV about all things Puffy, all things Bad Boy. And there's a video of him that got posted a couple months ago where he says that, according to him, Diddy never took the band serious. He never took making the band serious. Behind closed doors, he was, like, dogging the band, and it was just, like, a, a check for him. Did you see that video? Did you see it? I didn't it? see it, but I definitely heard about it. Like, I didn't see it because I don't like to watch stuff that's like negative about mm -hmm. me. Don't make me feel good. But I tell somebody else to watch it and then tell me what And then tell me. Like, that yeah. might be the same thing. Yeah. I don't watch it, but I tell my folks, hey, watch this and tell me what it said. Exactly. Exactly. So I did get the tea on that. But um, even though I don't remember Gene, I still believe that. I, be I know for a fact that what we did was new it was never done before i don't think that puff hit, put all his eggs in the basket with the band he mm -hmm. it was about a tv show once that show did as good as it did that's why he did season two with danity kane he wasn't focused on the band no more his thing is to get this this show he's in the limelight again then he did day 26. it's the tv show now you know what I'm saying? And he did the same shit with Danity Kane and them. Like, all right, we off to the next shit. So, yes, I do know that it was about the television for him. I don't even think that he thought that our season was going to be as big as it was. And when it became that big, he was like, oh, shit. And then he was off to the races. So I definitely believe believe that. Yeah. Um, what did he say? He also said, he says, I doubt those guys were making a hundred dollars a day. Mm. I don't, it could, he could have been right. I would have to calculate that. We wasn't getting paid like every day for me to be able, you know what I'm saying? But I think that I know that once we was you know the band and we had our album and we oh we was definitely making money you know what i mean like we were making money we weren't making what we were supposed to be making because like i said it was people hands in, in our pot but we were making money i was definitely getting more than a hundred dollars a day i know that's right yeah um i watched an interview today with ines and it was an interview he did with 15 Minutes of Fame, an interview that Enos did with 15 Minutes of Fame, and he said this. He said that they tried to sign you all for a total of 7500 total and with a publishing offer of $50,000 a piece. And he basically spoke up to get y'all more. What do you remember about this? 
I can't really remember that aspect because you know we mm-hmm. all got our own. I I believe him though. You know what I'm saying? I I do. I don't remember that, but I'm not gonna say he's not telling the truth. I do believe him because I I do remember at one point we got our contracts redone. And so, who was the person who started that? I can't remember. I know it wasn't me. You know what I mean? So it could have been that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also watched the interview with Freddie, who is fucking funny, by the way. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't know. I guess at the time, I didn't know Freddie was from Miami. I'm from Fort Lauderdale. So when I was rewatching him and certain shit, he was saying like "butt bunky naked" and shit like that. I'm like, that uh-huh. is so South Florida. <laughs> that is so South Florida. Niggas, niggas, grown niggas still stuck in their thumb. That is so South Florida. <laughs> like I'm like, that's my, that's my South, that's my South Florida family right there. Hey, Freddie P. He said in the interview that Sarah sent y'all a contract in a group message. That basically, or some paperwork that basically said that Diddy got forty million plus for one season of y'all show. What do you remember about this, and what was your response? I was sad, but you know, for me, I can't sit on past shit. I stay on past shit. I I be stagnant. I can't sit on that. Mm-hmm. So I got to try to you know learn from it. You feel me? And and move past it. And and let's see if I could get some of the money. If not, then I'm not going to dwell on it. But it's a sad thing to know when you see how much money was made. We all parents. You know what I'm saying? Like, and you just like, damn, like 40 million, like five of that. You know what I'm saying? Could it could have did something? You know what I mean? I'm just like, I'm not saying nobody deserves anything, but to just take that much money. You know, and it's just, it's a sad thing to know because, like, that was really me. Nobody told me what to say. Nobody gave me a script. Nobody wrote my rhymes. That was my pen. That was my brain. You know what I mean? So, but somebody else to just get all this money off of my pen, off of my brain, off of my personality is fucked up. Come one, come all,